be do be do do be do. Hello, 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 hello. What's going on, YouTube? This is your certified life and relationship coach, Coach Court. In this video, we're going to just do a quick subscriber Q and A. I want to make sure that I actually set this here so that it's actually for only subscribers only because I want to give a little bit of back to you guys that have been faithful followers of the channel who has helped me reach this uh, level of growth. So I want to make sure that I, I just give back to you guys. Subscribers only. If you guys are going to chat, you have to be a subscriber. Sorry. If you guys are a member of the program, my uh, Fruit for Seeds program, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Make sure that if you are a Harvest Level member, that you are getting your monthly membership one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching session with me. I appreciate you guys for doing so. Uh, I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys that have supported me, helped me get to this point, helped me push how important attachment styles is in are in rom romantic relationships. So I don't know where you guys are from. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to ask a question about your interpersonal relationships right now. And I think you only have to um, be subscribed for at least a minute before you can send a message. But uh, just please make sure you do that. Just giving back to uh, the, the channel. It gives back to me, lets people know that, hey, this channel is a valuable channel. There are a lot of other coaches out there that you can work with, but you chose to work with me and you chose to uh, follow my guidance. And it's actually been pretty successful. I've helped people get back with their people that they've broken up with. I've helped people learn about themselves, heal themselves. You know, I got a bunch of different resources I'm going to be using. Um, I, I do use in my coaching sessions and, and, and tools that I give my clients to help them uh, become better versions of themselves and help secure themselves to a healthier attachment style. I'm going to answer a question here too that one of my subscribers asked. Let me find it really quick. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Have you guys are wondering if you're in here right now, if you're wondering why you can't chat, it's because you have to be a member. I mean, you have to be a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, then you may be out of luck. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's one way to give back to me, give back to the channel. And it also boosts my analytics. Let it let YouTube know, hey, Coach Court kind of knows what he's talking about. So please push this content to more people. So let me see here. Um, I'm just going to pick one random comment here. One random question. Which I typically, I, I used to do a lot when people used to send me emails. I used to answer them one on one. I used to answer them, you know, for free. Actually, you know what? I have a ton of emails that I can answer for you. I'm not going to use your name if you guys are in here. What's up, Glenn? I'm not going to use your name if you guys are in here and you had a question that was submitted. So be at ease with that. You know, another thing about YouTube, I get a, I get a ton of like junk email from, um, just random advertisers, random, random people that want me to, to like, you know, be an ambassador for their type of, for their, for whatever they're selling. You know, they may be selling um, teeth flossers or a bunch of different things. Like, it's interesting. Like when you get into this realm of work, or this YouTube community, it's, if you guys can't comment, just so you guys know, the reason why you can't comment is because you're not a subscriber. This is a subscriber chat only. So subscribe to the channel. It serves you nothing. You just slam that subscribe button and you're good to go. It'll take a it'll take like a minute, I want to say, in order for you to start chatting. But Glenn, it's so good to see you, brother. Always good to see you. Glenn is one of my moderators. He's been here for a while now. I'm looking for this particular question here. I apologize. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Happy Monday.
you know what? I'm not gonna do it. All right, so if you guys are in here, you know what? I'm going to open it up for you guys. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna open it up. Thanks for the likes. Seven likes. Wow. All right, all right, all right. So, all right. All right, I'm not going to be that way. Chat is now open. But you can help me out by subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you. If you guys aren't part of my, part of my membership program, the Patreon account, um, it's, it's up to 70% off a coaching session. So if you haven't had coaching with me yet and you're interested in, in coaching, join my Patreon account. It's the quickest way to uh, get a hold of me. And also, you'll get a, just a substantial discount for if you, instead of going and um, you're booking a session through my website, you'll get a, a lot cheaper rate going through my Patreon account. That link is in the description below. But also, I'm pretty sure I have, look, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm pushing a bunch of different stuff here. I also have it somewhere here. Give me a second. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Look at me all rookieing it up. Okay, I don't know why it's. No, nah, I don't want that. This is what I want. Sorry. All right. Come on, chat with me. Let me know what's going on. How's life? Like and subscribe. Shirley Hess, thank you. Like and subscribe. Can a dismissive avoidant have long term change if they are self aware? And are trying to change behaviors on their own will the cycle always be present i have yet to see that happen where i have, I have yet to see where a person who's an avoidant has been able to create long-term change within the, within their on their own accord they always have to have you know, majority of the time you need somebody that's there that's holding you accountable that is going to be there to uh, let you know when you're you're they're participating in self-destructive behaviors. You know, this is one of the things like, you know, same for anxious attachers. They can sustain, you know, what they consider to be a healthy way of operating a relationship up until a certain point. And then that's when the protest and behaviors start. That's when they can't hold it anymore. Something triggers them. If they don't have somebody there that's that's helping them reprogram their subconscious mind, that's helping them. Uh, uproot all those negative negative coping mechanisms and negative uh, communication skills or unhealthy communication skills that they have, then it's not going to stick. You know, it's really important for them to not only learn about why they are the way that they are, what makes them tick, you know, where it came from, and how to uh, reprogram that and start to replace it with healthier behaviors. You know, being able to operate with that adult brain instead of that child, that inner child brain that's that's scared and that's trying to simply um, fend for themselves. Will the cycle always be present to some capacity? Always. You know, I tell this story all the time, you know, even as an anxious attacher myself, um, it's a tough thing to um maintain it long term if i don't have some type of accountability because the problem lays where um you think you have everything under control and it, and it's and this level is love addiction you know being an anxious attacher is love addiction you think you may have that under control until something triggers you and i joke all the time which isn't even really a joke i say if you think about like people who struggle with alcohol and drug addiction. Um, it's only a matter of time. If they're not having accountability, if, if they're not doing their AA or their, their, their NA, if they're not participating in meetings and having somebody that's keeping them, holding them accountable, it's only a matter of time before they, they relapse, you know, and like they say in a, in, in those recovery programs, you know, you're going to relapse nine, 10 times, before you finally kick the habit and you get it right. So it's kind of along the same lines as that. If they're not doing the work, if they're not um, consciously aware, or conscious or, or, or um, constantly, yeah, constantly self-aware of their behaviors and how they're showing up and they don't have anybody to hold them accountable, then it's just going to continue. 
the very long answer to your very short question. It's always going to be there in some way, shape or form. Is that the same thing for all attachment styles? Yeah. So even as a secure attacher, even people that are secure attachers, you, you, you know, your attachment style changes like there can be there's different circumstances, different situations, different relationships that you get into can cause for your attachment style to change. Because what you do is you start to pick up on unhealthy coping mechanisms, unhealthy, unhealthy boundaries, un unhealthy communication skills. Um, because it's like a scale, you know, it's, it's like a sliding scale. So if you're in a if you're dead center as a secure attacher and you get yourself in a relationship with somebody that's more dismissive, you're going to slide the scale a little bit and become more anxious to try to pull that person closer to you. And it doesn't happen very quickly. It happens over time. You know, it happens as you start to get you Once you fall in love with that person and once you fall for that person, you know, head over heels, you know, because most of the time you don't really know who a person really is until about six months, three, three to six months of the relationship. You know, otherwise you'll be looking at that person with rose colored glasses on you and you're thinking that everything that they're doing is, you know, maybe healthy, maybe normal. You know, they may have a few quirks about themselves that you feel like, you know, I can I can handle this. I can uh, I can kind of help love them out of this. Maybe they've struggled with something in the past that they they they're bringing into this relationship. And, and I'm a different person. This is what we're thinking to ourselves. I'm a different person. I can make this person change. I can love them out of this. I can I can help heal them. And even as a secure attacher, what ends up happening is you end up sliding your scale more to fit in their narrative and you completely disregard um, your own needs. And sooner or later, you'll end up being anxiously attached. I, I hear it all the time. You know, people come to me and they say, you know, Court, before this relationship, I was secure. Like I didn't have a, a care in the world. I was dating different people. Um, this person came along and just really drew me off of my center i was like yeah that's because you have this secondary attachment style once it gets triggered you know doing whatever situation you're going through that's why you end up struggling and you're reaching out to coach court you know and for the people who are more avoidant they typically don't once that secondary style gets hooked gets attacked gets activated if it's a if it's avoidant they typically don't reach out they'll just go into their uh um, what do you call it? Creature comforts and avoid it and maybe move on to the next relationship. <clears throat> Stop worrying about their attachment style and start worrying about how you want to be treated. Absolutely. About DAs and rebounds. What's up, Austin? I hope you uh, subscribe to the channel. My ex is definitely in a DA with avoid anxious tendencies. We are talking more and more but she recently told me she's seeing a new guy. They started dating three weeks after we broke up. How do DAs rebound? Exactly like that. Now, for most avoidance, all right, from, the, avoid, from my experience, a lot of avoidance will participate in things like that. They'll get in rebounds. They'll you know, watch a lot of TV shows, hang out with friends and family more, uh, bury themselves in their work, in their hobbies to avoid feeling what they felt for you in a relationship. And it, it, it honestly, it works for them. They're able to bury a lot of the feelings that they have for you. You know, they repress them. And then they get into this new relationship. And it's actually a pretty. I, I think about that as an anxious person. It's just something that we can do. We can get into the anxious relation, uh, get into a rebound relationship as an anxious attacher, but our heart and our soul will still be with that previous person. But for them, they can do it a lot, a lot easier. Um, and usually, when that, when people, you know, tell me stories like this, I advise them to just, you got to hang back. If you know the person is with with somebody else, the more you try to pester them. The more you try to draw them closer to you while they're still with that rebound person, it's not going to work out in your favor. If anything, it's just going to make you look, especially as a man, it's just going to make you look smaller, weaker. And the more you do wrong, 
the more that other person is going to look like he's doing right. So that's exactly how they rebound. That's, that's usually how it goes. Sorry about that, Austin, man. I know it's going to be a long road. It's going to be a long journey up until the time where you feel like you've gotten yourself centered enough to where you can reach out or the rebound fall apart, you know. Can an anxious preoccupied uh, be happy in their rebound after a long term relationship? Will they reg regret leaving a relationship? One would think that they, they would, <clears throat> but they won't start feeling it to probably six months down the line. If I'm being honest, when they get into the relation, the rebound with that person. Oh, anxious preoccupied, be happy in their rebound. Yeah, no, no. It's usually a facade, you know. If an anxious, preoccupied person get into a rebound, it's usually a facade. And it's usually a way of trying to replace that level of intimacy that they had with you. But it usually doesn't work out, especially if you guys had a long term relationship. But there is a catalyst to this. What I have seen, though, when it comes to anxious, preoccupied women. If they were always anxious in your relationship and for, for whatever reason, you continue to ne neglect their needs and. If they were trying to communicate with you, if you fail to meet those standards and to, you know, feel their needs, then they probably detached themselves from you weeks, months before they decide to break up with you. And then the next person is going to come along and pretty much be feeling all those needs that you weren't feeling. So short term, yes, they may be happy in the rebound relationship. Long term, once they realize that, you know, this thing isn't perfect, you know, because usually people who are anxious attacher, the attachers, they have the bad habit of going from relationship to relationship, if especially if they know there's no going back to the person that they were with or I'm asking for for men. OK, so. If who was the, the anxious attacher, if the man was the anxious attacher, if the woman was. Yeah, there is a possibility. It, it, same with the men, too. Um, if you guys don't realize, like women in particular, as an overall statistic, women are in relationships at a 70, 80 percent rate. Men typically don't. So if a man was to end the relationship, end the marriage in particular, you know, it would have to take something very alluring or something very strong to draw them away, especially if he was an anxious attacher. What's up, Franco? It's good to see you, brother. True game. My, my FA leaning anxious pushed me away, but wanted more wanted move me closer at the same time. So if you guys aren't are part of the membership, remember to reach out to me to get your one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me for the month also i still have that list of people who so far i've i've filled the three coaching slots you know we've had our sessions for when, when we had our uh, 6k celebration i only have one left i'm still going to uh send out those t-shirts and that book for you guys if you guys are in here i haven't forgot about you just been busy i got you don't worry about it if you guys aren't a subscriber Subscribe to the channel. That's one thing you can help me out with. You know, it's, it's just one easy way to give back to the channel. It should just slam the like button, slam the like button, slam the subscribe button. Simple. You know, you can always unsubscribe later on down the line. If it's something I don't, you, I say that you don't like. That's just how it's going to happen anyway. So I appreciate you guys. Happy Monday here in the U.S. is Monday. All right, rebound for a DA. What's the question, Karen? It's kind of brief. What I typically see with men, the dismissive avoidance, they don't they don't rebound. It's they usually just kind of bury themselves in their creatures, their creature comfort. They're, they're focused on their purpose, bury themselves in work, bury themselves in hobbies, start hanging out with their buddies more. But 
they don't really see the need to have romance, right? As a general rule, they don't they don't seem to, seem to have the need to be in some type of committed long term relationship. If anything, they may hop into something. They may just like date around. You know, those are the guys that look like the players and the bad boys. As a general rule, all right. Just so you guys know, there's my disclaimer. This isn't law. My ex is a DA, and he's dating one. Some she's dating someone else. We work in the same place, and he's dating somewhere from. That sounds real messy and very, very um hard to deal with. So. I don't know if you could take some type of hiatus from work or, or what you need to do in order to, to get yourself right mentally, but that sounds like something that's a very tough, tall order to deal with. I'm sorry, Karen. Everybody here in the chat, we're gonna say go say a prayer for Karen and hopefully she can handle that the best way possible. But you know, seeing somebody that you were in love with, somebody that you were, you know in a committed relationship with be with somebody else right in front of your face is a it's, it's got to be tough so i'm sorry hey if you guys are coming in here you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel if you want my help personally you can reach out to me on my website courtney at fruitful seeds i'll put that banner up here if i still have that i do not and you want to send me an email if you have any questions I try my hardest to get around to all of the emails. I do apologize for the people who who uh, aren't really happy about the responsiveness, but I don't have an assistant. I know there are other coaches that you know they have assistants and they have you know coaches that work under them, you know, kind of apprentices or whatever you want to call them, interns that answer the questions for them. But I'm not that way. I'm I'm one I'm a one man band. You know, everything that I do comes from comes from me and my mind and what I've learned over the years, what I've learned about relationships and attachment styles and um how attraction works between men and women and men are from Mars and women are from Venus and five love languages, uh four horsemen of the apocalypse, Dr. John Gottman's work, just pretty much Anything, anything and everything in relationships. Um, so I apologize if I can't get back to you in a timely manner on those emails. I'm not ignoring you. But sometimes I have to just hold space for myself, you know, and make sure that I, I can give you quality information. I'm not just going to jot out an a email to you just simply to reply to an email, right? So, and there's always that paid service where you get uh, two two paid correspondents from my email coaching. If you guys are interested in that as well, um, I also have the email here up on the screen. If you guys are interested, okay. Let me check another question here. Yeah, that's hard. That's very hard. Any more questions? Bat birds control. It's good to see you again. My DAX sent me a letter the day she left for a year. I heard from mutual friends. It was a hate complaint letter directed at me. So I returned it unopened. Wouldn't risk losing my progress. How long have you been in no contact? Yeah, you don't want to lose the progress, especially if you've been in no contact for a while and you're growing and you feel like you're coming to terms with the breakup. Because, listen, breakups are tough, tough, tough business. No matter how you cut it, no matter how healthy or unhealthy it was, they're just tough. And I'm almost envious of people who can just move on right away, who can just you know, pick up all their emotional baggage, toss it over their shoulder and say, yep, guess it's time to move on to the next person. I envy that person because that's not something that I can do. I was just talking to talking to a guy today from across seas and and we were talking about how how difficult it is for certain people you know whether man or woman that are anxious attachers to just disconnect those feelings and emotions so easily it's like 
the hardest thing in the world to do. And just like I talked about in my last video, I don't know if I have that link in the description or not, my last video, which is anxious attaching grieving. It is a long process. It is a very painful process. Uh, and it's a process where you feel like you have no control over yourself. Or you feel like no matter what you do, you're going to constantly be haunted by the person that you were with because you just can't, you can't get that person out of your head. It's like that song that you listen to. That's, it may even be an annoying song, but after a while, the song gets stuck in your head and you're like, wow, uh, what can I do to get this song out of my head? 10 weeks, no contact. Good for you. So the no contact rule is meant to be a, a, a opportunity and a time for growth, for reflection, and for healing for yourself. It's not meant to get a person back. Let's just be honest here. Because if you think about it, if a person broke up with you because they had low attraction for you, they had low feelings for you, and they uh, broke up with you, no contact isn't going to do too much for that person. They're not going to want it. You think they're magically going to grow those feelings for you again? Because the way that you guys even fell in love with each other was because you spent time with each other and you were in each other's presence and you were talking a lot. And if that attraction lowers to the point where you know, there's a scale that a coach I listen to talks about, you know, a scale between one and 10. If it, if it drops below a five and you go in no contact, they'll probably just be like good riddance. Like I, I wasn't attracted to this person anymore anyway. So it's it's really a time for you to reflect on the things that you need to improve about yourself, how you can show up differently, uh, where you need to strengthen in your life, you know, especially if you're uh, somebody who is an anxious person, you know, even if you're a fearful person, you need to figure out what I need to do to improve the way that I showed up. I want to stop making these mistakes over and over again, because once you get to a certain age, you start to realize that there's a pattern. Like there's a pattern like I'm showing up the same way in every relationship, which means, you know, the one variable that isn't changing is me. I am the one constant in all of these relationships. So what is it that I need to do? What is it? Who I do? Who do I need to see? Who I need to talk to? Um, do I need to stop letting this inner child come out to play all the time and, and come out and complain and protest? Or do I need to realize that um, this adult brain this adult person needs to take control of his life or her life i still love her and hope we'll reconnect when we're different people though absolutely you have to become different people the old you has to die in order for the new you to be born so like like i, I like to say you know the the old operating system has to be uninstalled for the new operating system to be installed and we all know that, you know, cell phone companies and com computer manufacturers, they're constantly coming up with new updates and new patches. And what happens is you get stuck and you're meant to you're meant to flow free like water. I was just thinking about that this morning, uh, looking at a quote from Bruce Lee. Can't remember the quote, but, you know, life is all about flowing freely like water. And I'm like, yeah, because I added my own spit, spin on it, which is stagnant water starts to stink you know, if you think about like you have dishes in the dish in the sink and that one pot gets stuck under there you may have you know left some water in there and you didn't realize that it was in there now that stagnant water after a while it starts to stink and it happens in your relationships too when you're when you become stagnant and you become complacent and you're not growing you're not flowing like you should you're just only going to become very toxic and unpleasant to be around, which is usually the reason people end relationships. So remember that stagnant water starts to stink. My FAX told me it's hard to see me leave every time I leave his house. He is struggling, but keeps telling himself he'll be all right. So I don't know if you guys are just kind of like toying with each other, or if you guys are or trying to rebuild that relationship. I'd like to know what's going on with that situation. If you guys are in the middle of repairing, if you're, because you don't want to like lead people on, 
You know, that's 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 the worst thing you can do. Or if you're just doing it just to, you know, relieve that 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 feeling of separation anxiety or whatever it is, you know, I would like to know a little bit more about that, Simone. You're a member, so I'm sure we'll be talking pretty soon. I dated a DA who was reaching out consistently at the beginning, but then flaked towards the end. Didn't know about attachment styles, failed to set boundaries and ignored red flags. Lesson learned. Yes, and these lessons are usually learned the hard way. When, you're, when your heart's shattered. Nothing teaches you better than a broken heart. You know, because when you when you when you're on easy street and you're just coasting in a relationship, you get caught up in a pattern and a rhythm. You know, you get into uh, you know every every Wednesday we're going here or every Friday we're going to be doing this. You kind of get stagnant, you get complacent. You you don't listen as much as you want. You, she's supposed to be you supposed to be listening to her. So this I was listening watching this video. Actually, no, it wasn't a video. I want to make sure I'm speaking. I'm trying to be like Don Miguel Ruiz, which is being impeccable with my word. I was watching a movie called Eurovision. I don't know if you guys ever ever seen it. It's by Will Ferrell. Uh, it just came out a couple years ago, 2020, actually last year. And I'm not going to give it away, but in the movie, you know, the woman started to complain about him not seeing her. And he's like, "I see you every day." It's like, no. You don't see me. That's where the anxious people go. You know, you don't. I feel like you don't see me. You don't see who I am as a person. You don't listen to what I'm what I'm telling you. You know, you hear me, but you're not actually listening. So yeah, that's what went down in that movie. And it's you know, I think it's a funny movie. If you guys ever think about watching it, check that movie out. How to get over girls and be a forever. <laughs> Is that something that you really want to do? Like realistically, I know that a lot of this stuff that people say on my channel on the wall, they're just they're 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 grieving. It sounds like the most logical thing, but don't go MGTOW or black pill or don't don't go don't go that way on this, you know? Because people ask me, they say, "What type of coach are you?" I say, "You know, I, I would consider myself a purple pill coach because I believe in relationships. I believe in love." We're all wired differently, you know, and not everybody can just take one or the other. You know, the people that can more power to you. But I'm all about um, understanding what makes a healthy relationship work and understanding how to vet people properly when you go into relationships. Because most of the time we don't we don't see people for who they are in the beginning. We don't see people or hear them when they tell us who they are and how they operate in relationships. Go back. One of my videos I have on my channel, it's called um, five questions you should be asking on a date. And it got some back, some backlash because people saying you shouldn't be asking people those questions. I'm like, well, if you don't want to waste time and you're serious about relationships, this is kind of what people do on dating apps. Like they don't waste a whole lot of time because they'll just go on to the next person. I can remember I had a person tell me, you know, I'm ready to have kids. And if that's a deal breaker for you, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, first off, I've never met you in person. Second off, what? <laughs> I, I'm oh, I supposed to just be like, all right, yeah, let's let's get on top of that. Literally. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up my previous comment. We dated for three years, lived together, and adopted a dog who we still share. So we talk most days and it felt like we were building towards something. I'm not going to bring up the rebound and try to break them up, but I want to still talk to her and connect. Is that a bad idea? You're giving her her cake and letting her eat it too. She can't have both. Uh, and I know if you're an anxious person, it seems like you're doing the right thing. But as long as that other person is it's monkey branching. As long as that other person is in that in a relationship with her and she's got that guy, she's just going to be holding on to you until she find she's finally comfortable or the guy finally says, hey, I want to make this exclusive. 
or the guy catches you texting her one day and he's like, hey, that's not appropriate for you to be texting her or a message pop up. And eventually you're going to get your heart broke. I'm pretty sure if they've been dating for quite a while now, I don't know how long, uh, that the, the guy may, may be getting a little uncomfortable about you guys having an arrangement with the dog or you guys talking regularly. That's pretty much what's going to happen. She's not having the opportunity to miss you. Absolutely. She's having both. She's got somebody who was her best friend for quite a while and also the new guy. And I would say that you would have had a better chance if she wouldn't have told you that she was seeing somebody else. That substantially decreased your chances because because now she's letting you know, like, hey, this is who this is what I got going on. I just want to be friends with you. So now, you know, you're at a disadvantage because you know that she has somebody else, which means it kind of keeps your you can't even make advances towards her because, you know, and she's told you that she's seeing somebody else. So. Yeah, two months. Yep. It seems like it might be um, most relate most rebounds. They only last about three to six months, but. Like Glenn said, she's still not getting that opportunity to miss you. Your absence hasn't been present. You hear that? Your absent absence hasn't been present yet. And that's the only way it's going to work. There's a lot of coaches that coach that. I, mean, I, I started to believe it. It works. Um, so whatever you have to do with the arrangement with the dog, you know, that's – that's a tough one. If if you ever need to talk to her about it, you know, about the meetup, about the swap, keep it business like be brief. Don't talk about your feelings or what's, you know, what's going on in your life, you know, about how so and so so and so at work has done this to you and you don't like them anymore. Don't talk about things like that. Don't talk personal. Just keep things very very business like, you know, what they call it, you got to go gray rock. You got to use the gray rock method. Look that up if you haven't heard of gray rock. That's the best way to work if you want her back. But if you want to stay in the friend zone, continue to do what you're doing because it'll work. Until she loses all interest in you together. And then you get that text message one day. You know, once you send her a message, uh, uh, hey, how you doing? How's your, how's your day? And then she says, Look, I don't think it's a good idea for us to talk anymore. You know, me and so and so are taking it. We're getting serious. So I've seen it. Don't want it to happen to you. You could tell her to keep the dog and the change. Sam is going explosive up in here, dropping bombs. We did do no contact for the first month. Not excited to do that again. Well, my friend, you know, you should probably um, start dating other people. You should probably start dating other people. That way you get rid of that scarcity mindset or it helps alleviate that scarcity mindset and just let you know that there are other people out there that you'll be in alignment with. with. Um, but the dog makes it a very difficult situation. But please keep it business-like. I'm saying if you if you want her back... And that's, that's, it's weird how that works, too. And we're going to talk about exes and stuff. People typically don't like when you move on to the next person, even if they've moved on. You know, because they'll always start to um, compare themselves to the new person that you're with. And then eventually it, it sparks that curiosity in them again. And even some resentment or some remorse about leaving you about letting you go and allowing for somebody else to come along, especially if you were a good person. If you guys were together for three years, I would I would wonder how long was she checked out of that relationship before she actually broke it off with you? Because they typically do that. They'll stick around with you until they have zero feelings left for you romantically. They may still love you as a person and as a friend, but they'll stick around until they're done and then they kind of move on to the person next. Hey, 
have been dating, but since I'm a hopeless romantic, it only made me miss her more. Yeah, it's going to take some exercise. If you don't exercise that muscle, man, it won't get stronger. So you have to exercise that muscle. Continue to do what you need to do. But I'm going to end this session here. All right, I'm in this session. I, I love all you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, like the feed. If you haven't liked it yet, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you know, to be alerted whenever I start another live session. I've been doing a lot of live streams. I feel like it's a lot more engaging. I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to consistently release those videos too. So you guys can, can be notified for the newest video I release. Subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Um, follow me on my other social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I am Coach Court. If you want to book a session with me, I can put up that banner here really quickly. Email me, Courtney at Fruitful Seeds. If you are a member, you know that, hey, we're going to have our session. If you're a Harvest Level member, we're going to have our session. And, and don't forget, you know, if you guys are interested in doing monthly coaching with me one-on-one, -on -one, it is 70% off my original coaching prices. If you sign up either through the YouTube membership or you sign up through the uh, Patreon, I recommend you guys sign up through Patreon just in case something happened with YouTube, just in case YouTube say, hey, we don't, we don't like Coach Court anymore. You'll still be able to get access to me through Patreon or through my website or through my email. So I appreciate you guys as always. Uh, happy Monday. Love all you guys. I hope you're able to heal your heart, heal your soul, because, you know, when you lose somebody, you feel like you lost your soulmate. And that hits different. When you feel like you've lost your soulmate, that hits way different than somebody that you were just seeing casually. So I'm here with you. Hope you guys are able to heal your hearts. Look at anything you need. Watch any type of video you can that's going to resonate with you. You know, that's one thing I learned. Um, there are certain certain coaches, certain uh, teachers and lecturers that just, the, the octane of their voice, it just, it sits with you, you know? So whoever you need to listen to, to get you through this, this uh, tough time in your life, I know you usually friends and family aren't those people, then go up, do what you gotta do, all right? Happy Monday again, have a good week. Love all you guys, peace.